Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 27 of the chapter Equilibrium. In this video, I'm going to discuss the next topic of the NCRT textbook that is ionization of acids and bases. I have already explained to you what a strong acid and a weak acid is, what a strong base and a weak base is. We are already aware of the different definitions of acids and bases. So, assuming that you have already studied all that, let us move on. I've listed out a few acids and bases here, strong acids and strong bases. Perchloric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydrogen iodide or hydroiodic acid, nitric acid and sulfuric acid. You have lithium hydroxide, these are strong bases now, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide and barium hydroxide. These are examples of strong acids and strong bases. Why are they acids? They are acids because they all donate proton according to Arrhenius and the Bronsted definition. And these are all strong bases because they very easily almost dissociate completely to produce OH negative according to Arrhenius definition or according to the Bronsted definition, they very easily accept the proton from the acid. They, are, they very quickly accept the, or they are very good proton acceptors or very good OH negative donors. Now, when you have strong acids and strong bases, they almost completely dissociate. And therefore, an equilibrium, even if it is established, it's hardly noticeable. Because almost to 100% you find that these compounds, they have broken down. But if you have a weak acid or a weak base, that is the time when an equilibrium is established. Why? Because when a weak acid or a weak base, we are taking an example of a weak acid now. Let us say the weak acid is HA any anion but the proton should be the cation there because we're talking of Lewis uh, sorry not the Lewis the Arrhenius and the Bronsted definitions so HA is the acid it combines with water and it dissociates and when it breaks down it donates the proton which water accepts therefore water acts as a base and it forms H3O positive and what is left here is A negative so what is left forms the conjugate base of the acid and the base gives you the conjugate acid. So H3O positive is the conjugate acid and A negative is the conjugate base of the acid. Now this equilibrium, once it is established, why does it, do we say it is an equilibrium? It's a weak acid. It does not completely dissociate it. Dissociate. Only a part of it dissociates and the reverse reaction also starts. Why? Because the acid formed a conjugate base and the conjugate base is really strong and since it is strong it is strong enough to go back gain the proton back again and go back to form the acid so the forward and the backward reactions they take place at equal speed and a dynamic equilibrium is established now if you really look the dynamic equilibrium in the dynamic equilibrium what is actually taking place in the from the reactant to the product side the proton is moving from the acid to the base and in the reverse side the proton is moving from the conjugate acid to the conjugate base so it is basically the movement of proton in opposite directions that decides the direction of the reaction so now the question is that when equilibrium is established when would this equilibrium be established how much of reactant and product would be there and which side of the reaction will be favored what are the factors that would decide this so we say that this equilibrium is dynamic it involves the transfer of a proton the dynamic equilibrium is simply due to the transfer of proton on both the sides on, on one side it is in one direction on the other side it is in the opposite direction therefore two reverse reactions are taking place now what decides which direction will be favored I told you if you remember that a strong acid produces a weak conjugate base and a weak acid produces a strong conjugate base. So you get two acids, acid and a base and on the product side also you have an acid and a base. Out of the two acids, which one is stronger will dominate, will react faster. So whichever if H3O which is the conjugate acid is stronger then the reaction in this direction will be favored and if the or rather the base if the conjugate base is stronger then it would react in the reverse direction 
So if you compare the two assets or you compare the, the two bases, whichever is stronger, that one will react. It means that one will dissociate, which means that the other direction or the direction of the weaker asset and the weaker base will be favored. Do you get me? If you have a strong asset, in, the, in these cases, what had happened? What did we have in the products? If you, let us say, HCl dissociated, it formed H3O positive and Cl negative. Almost, if you take the reaction mixture, almost all of it will be H3O positive and Cl negative because the reaction favored the formation of Cl negative and H3O positive, which were weaker. And HCl was much, much stronger. So the reaction took, takes place, the stronger one reacts and the weaker ones are formed. So when you have a weak acid and a weak base, you get a strong conjugate base and a strong uh, conjugate acid if it's weak. And it is this direction which will start reacting faster. And therefore the direction that will be favored will be the reverse direction. This direction would be favored. So the direction that will be favored when you have a weaker acid, it depends on the strengths of the acids and bases, the conjugate acids and bases that are formed. Whichever exceeds the tendency to donate the proton would be the one that would be favored. Now, when we talk of weak acid, all acids may not be very, very weak. So there is a gradation, strongest acid, moderate acids, weaker acids, weakest acids. So which direction is being favored will depend on the comparison of the acidic strengths on both sides or the basic strengths of the bases on both sides. Whichever is stronger will be favored. So when we say Whichever is, which has a stronger tendency to donate the proton is a stronger acid. That one will be favored, which has a stronger, whichever is stronger obviously would win the race. So if it is a competition, the one that is stronger is obviously going to win. So the stronger acid and the stronger base are the ones which would react and the ones that would be formed would be the weaker acids or the weaker bases. So actually, what is the direction being favored? What is being formed? The weaker acid and the weaker base. So the equilibrium always shifts in the direction of the weaker acid. Let us say if HA is stronger than H3O positive. If HA is stronger than H3O positive, then the formation of H3O positive will be favored. But if H3O positive is stronger than HA, then the formation of HA will be favored. So equilibrium usually always shifts towards the weaker acid and the weaker base. As stronger acid donates a proton and the stronger base always accepts a proton. And the stronger acid donates the proton to the stronger base. That is why the reaction is always favored to the, towards the weaker acid and the weaker base. Then, as I told you, I'm repeating it, that strong acids have very weak conjugate bases and strong bases have very weak conjugate acids. What does this mean? A strong acid will almost favor the weaker base. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, the weaker acid or the conjugate base is weak. So it is always the weaker acid and the weaker base which th that direction would be favored. So strong acids and bases always, always go towards completion. While weak acids, on the other hand, they form very, if they form very weak, if the strong acids form very weak conjugate bases, then a weak acid would form a very strong conjugate base. Therefore, the reaction, backward reaction would be favored. Now, for example, we have these weak acids, that is HNO2, HF and CH3COOH. When they dissociate or they donate a proton, they result in the formation of NO2 negative, HF forms F negative and CH3COOH forms CH3COO negative. Now, these were weak acids, so they will form strong conjugate bases. But what are you comparing? You are comparing base to base. So the conjugate base that is formed, you compare it to the base here, that is you compare it to water. If water is a stronger base than this, then the reaction in the forward direction will take place. But if this base that is formed is stronger than water, then the reverse reaction will take place. And in this case, we know that these are bases that are formed and these bases are stronger bases than water. Since they are stronger bases than water, what will happen? The reaction will start proceeding. The backward reaction will be favored. 
that is the reaction which moves towards the weaker acid and weaker base will be favored. So these are much stronger bases than water and therefore the reverse reaction takes place. One application of this or some place where we see this very nicely is where you use indicators to uh, tell you about the acid and base uh, mediums. Phenoctaline and bromothymol blue are examples of indicators. These show different colors in their acidic form and when they are present as the conjugate base, they change their color. So for a, this equation, they, so they basically act as weak acids. So when they act as weak acids, H indicator in aqueous medium, it combines with water. It is the same HA. Instead of A, we use that indicator. And it gives you H3O positive an indicator, negative negatively charged indicator, which is the conjugate phase. Now, the color of these indicators, it is different in basic and, uh, sorry, acidic and basic medium. And that is why they act as indicators. Well, this was all in this subtopic. And with this, I'll finish this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends. And please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.